today's episode, we're talking about pizza. Anthony Falco's in the kitchen with us today. He's gonna show us how to make dough using a sourdough starter, creative ways to make your sauce, two different ways to cook it, so stick around. Here in the kitchen with Anthony Falco, one of the renowned pizza makers in the United States and anywhere else. Okay. You're the guy who's advising other pizza makers how to open the restaurants, how to make the perfect dough, that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, I, I do pizza consulting and I do it all over the world. Yeah, just trying to spread that vibe all over the world. All right, so for all those home cooks out there who, let's say, they don't have a lot of experience making their own dough, making their own pizza, we're gonna show them today how to make your own dough, how to make your own pies at home that are as good as restaurant quality, would you say? Or as close as you can get. Better than kitchen. most people's restaurant, depending on where you live. There you go, <laughs> all right. So when it comes to dough, do you have preferences, specific mm, flours that you like to work with? Yeah, I mean, but again, I'm working all over the world in different places, and so you know, my particular style of pizza is to try to um, have a conversation with the local products that are available and yeah. le leverage the best things possible from wherever I am. Mm -hmm. So that may not be flour. Um, and so I might need to look for something outside of that particular local area. I do have I, in the United States some places that I really absolutely love. And today we're going to be using a flour from I think maybe the best flour producer in the United States. Um, called Karen Springs out of Skagit Valley, Washington. If you go to a store and you look for something local that's stone milled, um, you know, I mean, it's, it, give it a shot, you know, it's, yeah. it's going to be something interesting. And then, you know, we're also going to blend in some King Arthur, which is available everywhere in the United States. And, you know, it's something that, you know, I know makes great pizza. So blending flowers is a, is a great thing. So a little bit of this fancy pants, like kind of more weedy, hippie flour, and then just some, yeah, AP. We are going to use AP is yeah. the short answer. Yeah. Right. This is actually the name of this pizza dough recipe that I have is called Neapolitanish. All right. So it's it's in the same kind of like spectrum as a Neapolitan pizza. Mm -hmm. But one of the things that makes Neapolitan pizza Neapolitan pizza is the temperature which it cooks at, which right. so like for a thousand degree oven, basically. very hot, yeah, yeah very quick. Um, and some of it has to do with how you make the dough. Um, but we are going to be using a high temperature oven and we're gonna be using a regular oven and you're gonna be able to see those differences. All right, time to make the dough. So it's important to have a digital scale. It is, yeah, sorry. Um, all my dough recipes are in grams mm -hmm. and by weight. And I think that's half of the battle. Yeah, I mean, I think that's, if you're gonna be a home cook, get a digital scale, just part of what you need. Yeah, and so real quick on baker's percentages, um, most dough recipes use utilize something called a baker's percentage where you basically, you're assuming you're always using flour, so that's 100%, and then all your other ingredients are uh, then- um, Relative to the flour. Relative to the flour. Yeah. So, um, you know, we have our flour is gonna be 100% flour, mm -hmm. um, and then 63% uh, water, that's our hydration rate, 15% mm -hmm. starter, which is the amount of leavening that we're using. Um, we're gonna do 3% salt and 2% olive oil. So I do, usually I'll do like a thousand gram recipe, right. which, um, and then that way it's easy to kind of, for math challenged people like myself, you know, it's easy to kind of understand what those percentages are. It's real, also, it's scalable that way, and then you can relate to other um, bakers or pizza makers when you're talking about your recipe. Like, you know, someone I can eat someone's pizza and be like, "This is delicious." What's the hydration rate? Oh, 72 percent. Oh, wow. What do you know? Yeah. Um, so it's a really, um, it's a useful tool. All right, the secret language of pizza makers here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, not a secret anymore. Yeah. Um, all right, so we're gonna start by weighing out our uh, dries, and that's gonna be in the big bowl. So we're gonna put our big bowl on here and we're gonna tear it out. Our dries are our flour and our salt. And I'm gonna mix the salt directly into the flour. And this is um, a little controversial. Um, you know, the Neapolitans would never do that. Hmm. They put the salt either in the water or they put it in the mix later. A okay. lot of bakers will also reserve the salt for the second mix because we're going to do two mixes. Salt is a retarding agent, so it will slow down the fermentation process. Yeah. I 
teach most of my clients to add the salt in the initial mix mm -hmm. because it's just not that much better. It's, it's not worth it to just forget the salt. Because <laughs> if you forget to add the salt, it's a big problem. Yeah. Do you know what the salt does in a, in a dough recipe? What, what's the purpose? Uh, beside making it taste good. That's what it does. <laughs> it makes right, it taste go. good. But it does, it will slow the fermentation down a lot. Yeah. And that's fine for us. We want everything to go super slow. And there's not, like people say, oh, you add the salt early, it's gonna kill the yeast. It's not, it's not killing anything. Yeah, so we're gonna do actually um, 400 grams of this, uh, of this beautiful Karen Springs Glacier Peak, uh, which is a hard red spring wheat. Okay. Um, Yakora Rojo is the variety. This is the AP King Arthur, yeah. which is a great flower. And we're going to add 100 grams of this um, just to like, I mean, look, pizza, I want people to eat my pizza and be like, wow, this is delicious pizza. So a little bit of white flour is going to go a long way. Right. You know, and that's 20%. And we've got 500 grams in here. And now we need to add our salt, which is going to be 3%. Oh, okay. How much? Okay, okay. If you had a thousand... Yeah, that would be easier. It would be 30. Yeah, so you have so. 500, so it's 15. Boom! All right, I'm getting, Look at back, this guy in, over I'm getting here. back in it now. So 50, and a 3% is a lot. It's definitely the highest end for big, a lot of people are like, that's crazy. So you're going full flavor here with your... I'm trying to up. season everything pretty aggressively. Yeah. You know, like, I want it to taste good. So, salt and flowers and just gonna mix it like this. So this, they're incorporated, the salts and the, uh, the flowers is, and it's all mixed together, and that's it. That's our dries, now we're gonna do our wets. Sure. And our wet, it's gonna be 63% hydration. We've got 315, we're gonna weigh the water too. We're weighing everything, everything yeah. gets weighed. Yeah. And you know, I mean, if you're doing, and you wanna be pretty precise, and one percentage point can make a big difference. Yes. So, it's important. To be accurate. Yeah. So it's our starter is 15%. Okay. Uh, 75. Boom. Sh Getting good. Sharp. So this is the starter, all right? Should we talk about this for a second? Yeah. We're going to pause to talk about the starter. First of all, smell it. What does it smell like? Comforting is how I would describe that. Like, okay. you know, like the warm dough smell of comfort. Okay. I got to say, if you're interested in starter, we made another video back in the day with Sarah Owens, uh, so check that out. How much was I supposed to put in here? 75? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so look 15%, at- 15%, right? Yeah, exactly, 15%. It's definitely floating. Look at that. So why is that important? People are like, oh, it's, it should float. Fl float test. Uh -huh. Well, all that does is it tells you that it's active and it's alive and it's full of air. All right, so starter's in there, water's in there, and then we're gonna use some olive oil. This is some extra virgin olive oil. It's from California. Um, Boom, 10 grams, which is 2%. Um, so now I'm just gonna mix it all together. Tap water, uh, we've got our olive oil, we've got our starter. If you don't live in New York City, get some nice bottled water, something that's nice. It should have some minerality to it. So look, we're mixing this all together. We just broke up the starter. Obviously the olive oil is not gonna really mix in there, but we don't want it like all just floating on the top. And then we're just gonna do like, Pasta method here, right? So we're gonna make like a little well in the center. Yeah, we're gonna make a little well, exactly. And you know, we have these amazing bowls that have a spout on it. So <laughs> it's just gonna pour right in there like, and we're gonna start. I'm gonna use one hand. And this is actually very important because if you use two hands, you know what's gonna happen? You won't have a dry hand. Yeah, you're gonna freak out because <laughs> it's sticky and it's gonna get all over it and you can't Instagram and you can't like pick up your coffee or do, you do anything. Do you need a dry hand to do something else? No, it it's just, just it's like for your preference. mental like, all you know, right. stability. People freak out. It's very sticky. This dough is designed to be delicious, not like easy to work with. Everything coming together and this mix is our first mix and it's, we're gonna mix everything to combine. Um, and as a general rule of thumb, I mean, maybe when you've, um, did your, your baking video this came across, is that when you work dough, you then want to rest dough before you work it again, right? There's all kinds of periods of working and then resting, mm -hmm. and that's what's gonna happen here, is we're gonna mix it. Is that what you mean when you're talking about the first mix and the second mix? Yes, okay. exactly. So we're gonna mix it, and then we're gonna cover the bowl, and then we're gonna mix it again. And that's super important. How much time is there in between the first mix and 30 the minutes. next mix? 
at least. Does it matter? Like, let's say if you're in a really hot, humid place, would you rest it for a different amount of time? No, or I would generally always always time. thirty minutes. If it was very cold, yeah, I might go a little longer. All right. If something pops up, you know, like if you've got to go run an errand or something, yeah. Whatever, fine. 30 minutes or an hour or two, I don't care. All right. It's not a big deal, but it's gotta be 30 minutes at least. Right. So it's come together completely. It's not flour, it's not water, it's not oiled salt. It's all come together and it's now dough. Yeah. And I've done a pretty good job of not getting it all over my hand. I'm using just the tips of my fingers mm -hmm. and the bowl is pretty clean. There's no like flour, there's no visible Flowery parts, there's no visible wet parts. Right. So it's a dough and it's a mess there, and I'm gonna get the rest of this off of my fingers. This gets covered and it rests for, yeah, 30 minutes. Right. Mm -hmm. Can you throw a towel over there or use plastic wrap? Doesn't I'm matter. a plastic wrap kind of guy. All right. Yeah, I like the, the, the total seal, you know? Yeah. Because the reason you do that is you just don't want to develop like a skin on there. Right. You know? It'll get crusty and crusty is not good. We want to keep it like looking nice. This is good, it's wrapped very nicely, it's lovely. Fantastic, and then yeah, 30 minutes. And now we're gonna do uh, a, our second mix, mm -hmm. and it, it hasn't, hasn't really grown very while. much. Yeah, you know, it's not. It's this is a slow, slow dough. Right. Um, so that has not happened, but you'll you will notice that when I'm mixing it, this mm -hmm. was the, basically the consistency I got. It was very shaggy mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, it's not like a very smooth dough. But just having sat there this whole time, when I start to move it now. Mm it really just starts to smooth out very quickly. Yeah. And that's it. I mean, it's like... It's starting to be reminiscent of a yeah. pizza dough already. How nice does that look? Yeah. Just like that. So I'm just kind of stretching it apart and folding it back together. Mm -hmm. Doing that over and over again. You got to stretch it and fold it. You're adding air in there that way. Um, Am I messing this up or like... No, it I was mean, a lot smoother when you were working I with know. it. Well, so part of it is just you, how you your hands. Like, so... You're making sort of I'm quick using motions. very light touches, very quick motions. Yeah. You know, and you don't want to, like, your hands, you've got every part of your hand is touching. Your hands are hot. They're 98.6 degrees. Right. So when you're touching dough, you want to use just, like, the tips of your fingers. But it's, I think it has to do with just very light, gentle touches. And once we get to kind of this point where it's really nice, smooth ball, right. we're going to put it back in this bowl, and it's going to rest for three hours. This has been resting for one to three hours. That was the bulk fermentation period. Yes. Next, we're gonna portion it out. Yeah, we call this ball and divide. So we've got it, it's bulked, it's grown, it's relaxed, and um, now we're gonna portion it. We're just gonna pull it out here. Boom, right here. A little flour on my scale. And this is my half sheet tray. Lightly flour the bottom of it. And we're gonna be doing 200 gram dough balls, which is gonna give you about a 10 inch pizza. Um, and which is really is really the perfect size for uh, that baking steel and then for our Breville oven. Mm -hmm. So if you want a thicker crust, make a bigger dough ball. So once you've portioned it, it's time to ball it. And what I do is there's like the skin side that was up and I'm gonna just fold it together and I'm gonna stitch it, stitch up the bottom, just like this, stitching the bottom together until you got a nice smooth ball that's very round. And it's gonna go and give itself room because it's gonna double in size. Good, and then so we've got our four dough balls. We'll make our little baby dough. Mm -hmm. Now these doughs are gonna basically double in size. Yeah. Over about, what did we say? I would leave these out at room temperature. Yeah. Room temperature specifically being around 72 mm -hmm. for anywhere from six to 12 hours. Right. And once they've reached that size, the, the that where they've doubled in size, mm -hmm. then you could either, if you wanted to use it, you yeah. could use it then or refrigerate it for up to four or five days. All right. Six days, seven days, yeah. eight days, nine days. Depends on how cold your fridge is. And you know, the dough is gonna be much more difficult to work. It's gonna lose some of its strength and it's gonna- After it's been in the refrigerator. For a very long time. Okay. You know, for multiple days, it will like tear, but the flavor will be really good. Hmm. Um, so, you know, I, it, it's always, I like to do, you know, make my dough a day, or two before yeah. and then just chill out and then you can do all your toppings the morning of the pizza party, bring out your doughs and you're ready to party. And so this is gonna get wrap over the top of it. 
it should be able to be workable right out of the fridge. So the wrap, plastic wrap, is just gonna go over the top to help the skin from forming over it. Mm -hmm. um, and then you can just put this little lid on top. If you don't have a lid, that's fine, but it just goes in the fridge mm -hmm. um, after six to eight hours at room temperature. Now this is a non-traditional sauce. I think most people think about red sauce when they think about pizza. Absolutely. We're just, you know, getting a little creative today. This is a white wine lemon cream sauce is what I call it. All right. Because it's got white wine, lemon, and cream in the sauce. Simple not, enough. Not a very creative name. <laughs> um, Would you just, encourage home cooks to sort of get creative once they have a dough that they trust to get creative with the toppings, creative with the sauces? Yes. Like this is just one example of something that you can do, but once you have a dough that you like, you can sort of go nuts. Yeah. Sauce, cheese, toppings. Yeah. This is not traditional. This is a beurre blanc with a lot of lemon in it. Right. So right? Was there was there like sort of like a traditional French cooking influence then on the sauce? No, no. I like Googled <laughs> it. I was like, how do you make like white wine sauce with uh, mushrooms sounds delicious? And I just looked it up and then I was like And then you riffed on that? Yeah, I just yeah, I'm just I don't you know, I'm just doing stuff. Yeah. You know? And then <laughs> throw it against the wall, see what sticks. This one stuck. It's a People are big fans of this, and I've executed it in various forms amongst my clients all over the world, mm -hmm. and uh, people really like it. So we've got our lemon zest, zested. You've got shallots and garlic coming together, ample amounts. And we're gonna get our butter. I'm, again, weighing everything out. Part of my job as a consultant is I'm teaching people. Right. So, you know, I like to have things like very, you know, relatable, teachable, and so having it all weighed out I think is important. Yeah. So we're gonna start with 20-something eh, grams of butter. Okay, it's on, oh, it, it says melt. Nice, that's what we want to happen. All right, um, wine, let's open up this wine. Yeah, now you asked for a skin contact wine for yes, this sauce. Yes, I did, Why? it's very important. <laughs> I mean, it's you could us. probably use any wine, but yeah. it's because we're using uh, 250 grams, so the other 750 grams, <laughs> I want it to taste good when I yeah. drink it. I don't know, that's that, me. You know what though, that's, that's good advice for home cooks where if you have to open up a new bottle and you're cooking with wine, buy something that you can enjoy the rest of it. It's, it is gonna, it's gonna make the sauce taste better if you, yeah. use, if you use a good wine. Yeah, I mean you, know, you don't have to spend $100 on a bottle yeah, of wine that you're cooking out, with. Don't freak out, But yeah. don't get the worst wine. Okay, perfect amount of garlic. So I measured the clove out first, but whatever. We'll give you credit for that. Um, it's a lot of shouts. We're only going to use 10 grams. Oh, that's fine. This will be great for something. We'll make a little omelet yeah, or something yeah. later. We'll use that. So our butter is uh, fairly melted. And we're going to just go in with the garlic and the shallots. I'm just going to really, you know, whatever. It's low and slow, man. There's no, no reason to freak out here. So you don't want to get off the bat. You're not trying to caramelize those. You're just trying to no. sweat them out. Just trying to sweat them out. Sweat them out, soften them. All right, so that's just going to go for a minute. Um, and we've got our cream, which is a quart. Two pints equals a quart, right? Mm -hmm. that's more math. Hell yes. <laughs> um, we're going to save a little bit of butter, like um, cube, uh, just like, like 10 grams, because we're going to whisk that in at the very end. Sure. Um, and we're going to keep that cold. So it's moving over here. Nice, kind of, you know, not too, not too fast. It's um, softening, it's sweating. Um, we definitely don't want to brown or burn the garlic. We're using that just as an infusion, basically. Yes. It's to flavor the cream because ultimately we're going to strain that cream. That's right. Okay, so. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, it, it's. I didn't have to do such a nice mince on any of that, did I? You know, it, <laughs> do, it does. It all makes a difference, you know? It does. Yeah. Make it nice, chef, or all make right. it twice, all right. you know? So it's, uh, it's all happening. I'm gonna add this uh, wine. Okay, so we're gonna get that um, rolling and we're gonna reduce. Okay. Then we're gonna add our white wine vinegar and we're gonna reduce. Then we're gonna add our cream. We reduce a little bit. Mm -hmm. Dump in this lemon zest, a little bit more salt. Taste it. Mm -hmm. If it tastes nice, then we're gonna whisk in our butter and turn off the heat and uh, that's that's the Sounds thing. Great. That's the whole thing. The wine and the vinegar, are you reducing it till it's almost dry in the pan? No. Or you don't have to. Or just by like half? Usually? Yeah, reduce by half. Yeah. Okay. We're not going to go full, like dry, right. sec. One thing to think about okay. when you make this sauce for your pizza 
is you need to do it ahead of time because you don't want to put a warm sauce ah, I see. on your pizza. So you want to make it um, kind of day of, but I'll give it enough time to cool down. All right. Once you've made it, how long could you keep it in the fridge for? So I'm going to say like a day or two. I mean, I don't, you know, I try not to make too much stuff too far in advance, yeah. but the flavors, the, uh, the next day, the flavors will definitely be, you know, yeah. more developed in there. Cream, yeah. sometimes it takes, a, like, tends to like just kind of dominate at first, but in, and after a day or two, they tend to like more absorb all the flavors. Oh, interesting. So we're gonna dump all of our lemon zest in now. It's a good amount of lemon zest. So that's been simmering about mm, five minutes. Yeah. Let those flavors infuse. Now we're just gonna finish it off with a little handful of butter. Yeah, more butter. Yeah. And then strain and we're gonna cool it down. All right, beautiful. And that's the stuff, and that's the thing. As the sauce cools down, it's also gonna gain a little bit of body. It's gonna thicken up a touch. It should thicken up quite a bit, yes. Yeah. Ready to stretch and shape our pizza dough here. The reason that we're ready is because we have all our mise en place nicely kind of laid out here. You wouldn't want to stretch your dough and then think, oh gosh, you know, where's my sauce, where's my cheese? You want to get all your ingredients lined up first and then begin to work with the dough. That is so true. But it's really important with pizza because once you stretch the dough, it will start to skin up, it will stick to the peel, like it's a very time sensitive kind of thing. You so want to you... be able to very quickly yeah. sauce toppings into the oven. Yeah. And that's the reason for the squeeze bottle too, I think, because it allows you to work rapidly and cleanly. Yeah, exactly, that's it. I don't want to be like spooning stuff and dripping it everywhere. I've got a very controlled vessel to put it on and then you know, move it away. Right. Yeah, we're, let's take a look at our doughs here. Sure. Out of that batch of dough that we made, we got four, 200 gram dough balls, mm -hmm. and then one little baby one. All right. I like to make, my youngest son, I like to make him like a little tiny pizza. That's sweet. Um, but these are like 200, 210 gram dough balls, and uh, it's gonna make a uh, like 10 inch pizza. So a little personal pizza. They're really, they've grown a lot. When I balled them, they were probably half the size. Yeah. And I let them proof at room temperature for about eight hours. Hmm. And then I put them in the fridge. Right. And they're basically ready to use from that moment. Mm -hmm. But they are going to continue to develop time in the fridge as they cold proof. After that eight hour proofing at room temp, how long can you keep these in the fridge for before you have to use them? That's a great question. So because there's no commercial yeast in there, yeah. essentially all the, the fermentation and metabolism stops. I at see. 42 degrees, 39 degrees, whatever your fridge is. Um, so it will stay like this. Uh, all naturally leavened dough will stay like this in your fridge. I've used them for up to 10 days. Wow. Kind of crazy. So that's a real advantage of having the starter and not relying on commercial yeast. I honestly think it's easier in a lot of ways. Yeah. If you can get over the fact of keeping your starter alive and yeah. feeding it, etc. Um, there's so many advantages to, to using it. When you have commercial yeast in there, it's like any you temperature change, overproofing. things can really drastically change a lot. We're gonna pull this bad boy out. One of the most crucial things is, as, is this stage when you pull the dough out, is uh, keeping it in this shape as much as possible. So I'm just gonna separate from his little neighbor. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna take it out. I'm gonna put the bottom in the flour like that, and then I'm gonna put it on here. And I wanted keep it as much in that shape as possible. And you can see it's like, it's already degassed a lot just by moving it. Yeah. Um, Cause it's like, it's really proofed and ready to rock and roll. So what I'm gonna do now is, this is the shaping of the dough. So the first thing I'm gonna do is define the crust. And I do that with the tips of my fingers and I, I'm gonna just touch every part that's not the crust. Mm -hmm. So that's the middle part. And I'm gonna leave this, this crust area cause we want it kind of nice you know, poofy crust. Flip it over and this is the bottom. Hmm. So I put a little extra flour on the bottom and I'm just dimpling like that. I want to leave some structure in the middle. I don't want it to completely degas. Right. And then I'm going to pick it up and kind of pass it back and forth with my hands. And it's going to start opening up. It's an extensible dough, like I said. We can do this. We call this hot dogging in the industry. Do a little hot dog in here, you know? That's just showing off. Yeah, exactly, it's just showing <laughs> off. But it is a really good way to like stretch the dough out quickly and um, uh, get it nice and round. For so the folks at home who don't want to necessarily toss it in the air, 
they can just drape it over the backs of their palms and yeah, you just pass like it, this pass and it from just hand kind hand. of like like you're turning the wheel of a car, just like going like that. You letting the gravity of the dough let sort the of stretch itself. Yeah, it's very extensible because of our mixing methodology and the hydration rate. It's very extensible, so it just it stretches out without a lot of effort. Hmm. But you can see all the life and the activity in the dough, all yeah. those bubbles in there. Yeah, it's very nice. It's a good dough. So we're gonna make our mushroom pizza here. Yeah. So we've got some white wine lemon cream. You know, and it's there. It's thick, but it's not. It's not too thick. It's not too runny. I think it would do well to cool off for a little bit more time. But we rushed you know, it a touch there. We rushed take it a video just a touch. Yeah. It, lo it's, it doesn't look too loose. We've got this beautiful um, Willoughby cheese, which is very similar to like a Taleggio. Right. That's and like a like a soft washed rind style cheese. Exactly. Basically. Yeah. Um, and it's you know Taleggio also works great, but you know we're here in the East Coast and we have Vermont near us and yeah. they're good at making cheese. Use your local ingredients. Yes, exactly. Doing, and we got some fresh mozzarella that was made down the street. Yay. <laughs> um, we're gonna put a little on here. And this cheese is gonna melt, you know, it's gonna run a little bit and we have cream sauce on there so we don't wanna do too much. I think that's with the amateur pizza makers that I've worked with and home pizza makers. They put too much toppings on. Too much toppings. So use restraint. Yeah. And, um, you know, use good ingredients and use uh, a, just a little bit of them. And then for my topping kind of philosophy, I want it to be like not too symmetrical. Yeah. Kind of like a little bit wabi sabi, you know? You know, like as it fell from the heavens, kind of. Right? Yeah, like exactly. That's my style. And then we've got our beautiful melange of roasted mushrooms, which have been seasoned with salt, um, olive oil, and a uh, little red wine vinegar. Right. We They're, roasted those off ahead of time and let them cool because you wouldn't want to add something hot, hot no, to the pizza. No, you don't want hot things on your dough. When uh, we have a pizza oven, we roast things in them at high right. temperature, and it's great. On a sheet tray directly on top of the pizza stone. Yes. You didn't just throw the mushrooms on the pizza stone itself. No, I mean, you could if you want to get wild. Yeah. Now, some ingredients you're going to want to roast ahead of time and use as a topping, and some ingredients you can use raw. Do you have sort of a rule when it comes to that? Yeah, I mean, generally speaking, things that um, have a lot of moisture in them. You right. want to reduce that mo moisture out of it and concentrate the flavor. So mushrooms are pretty much all water. Right. So you want to get that out of there. Otherwise, when you cook it, it's going to come out onto the pizza. So you want to concentrate the flavors. And if there's other liquids you can put on there that have more flavor, like white wine lemon cream sauce, <laughs> you're going to use that instead. So, um, you know, that's, that's a really great thing to roast ahead of time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, some things that you want to put on raw, like um, thinly sliced onions are really nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like meats, obviously, like any kind of like, uh, you know, cured meats, right. prosciutto, cotto, and salumi and things like that. Mm -hmm. So this is ready to go in the oven. You want to give it a little test, make sure it's moving nicely. It's a well-floured dough. And then I'm going to turn around and pop it in the oven here. Boom. Beautiful. And this is the Breville Pizzaiolo oven. Mm -hmm. um, what it is, it's an electric oven, and it goes to like 750 degrees. Wow. It's, it's crazy. It, yeah. It's really hot. Hotter than your home oven. Definitely. Yeah. And that extra 250 degrees makes a big difference. Right. So this is basically almost as hot as a wood-fired oven, and, and there's a lot of kind of modern pizzerias that are using electric ovens, high-temperature electric ovens. So when this came out, I was like, yeah, electric oven, whatever, no big deal. Um, I, I know how those work. Um, so we've got it at the highest possible setting. Right. And so the whole thing is gonna take about two minutes. Fantastic. So we're gonna finish this with a little bit of chopped parsley. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a nice color contrast and just give us a little bit of verdancy with all this richness that we have happening here. Yeah. Um, we're gonna do a little black pepper, which is nice. And more Parmigiano Reggiano. Yeah. A little bit of extra virgin olive oil. And that's, that's the pizza. It's beautiful. Right there, I think it looks nice. Yeah. yeah. 
I'm gonna give it a try now. Okay, remember, to get a nice crust, you wanna not touch that area and just use the tips of your fingers. Right. Yeah, exactly, just big Do I dimples. need to worry about this big bubble here? Or doesn't matter. I mean, it's a, it's a really, if you want a bubble, then you can leave it. If you want, if you don't want a bubble, you can just, there you go, pop it. Easy. Keep your crust, and you want the crust to be even, so like, take your, go around and like, make sure it's like even. Right. All the way. And then you're gonna put a little bit of flour on your hands and pick it up and pass it back and forth. And so this area, the in between the, the crust and the, the flat part, mm -hmm. you want that to nestle like right here on your, in, your, yeah, in your thumb and you're going back and forth like this. That's but it, he's doing it. And it's rotating as you do it. I see. And yeah, and then you can kind of use, open your fingers as you go back and forth now. Is it starting to stretch a little bit? Yes, dude. Yes, it is. Yes, things are happening. Yeah. So now you can put it down, call a little time out, we'll yeah. see the shape. And then, so you've got a little bit of, uh, you know, look, it's, yeah, it's it's round. Yeah. So now I want you to try this part where you put it on your fist and you kind of move it around like that. All right, that's good. Now you're on the edge. You're doing good. You're letting gravity do most of the work. I love what I'm saying right now. I love yeah. it. Yes, it's great. It's fantastic. You want to try to just do one little toss, just one, just for the kids, just you little, fling little, it, one little hot dog. You fling it this way. So you got it. Look, check it out. So yeah. it's on the, on the. You're supporting it fully. Yeah. One hand is going this way, and the other hand is going that way. And then you have to catch it at the end, though. Well, yeah, you got to catch it. <laughs> but I'll catch it. Throw it to me. No, no, no. <laughs> hey, mamma mia, pizza pie. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. All right. Fantastico. Okay, so this is the it's bottom. It's a forgiving dough, you know? I think yeah. there's other pizza doughs where that would have torn in half, probably. It's, yeah, it's strong, you know? It's <laughs> yeah. that great Skagit Valley magic dough. Yeah. So a little flour on the bottom here. Just sprinkle on the bottom and then rub it in, because this is the bottom. I see. You can see it's like kind of dimply and cratered, where the other side is nice and smooth. This is basically lubricant to get it in and out of the oven. And so it's very important for you know, you don't want to top the pizza and then you try to pull it off and it comes into a big thing, so. Right. So then now. Do you have advice for home cooks? If they have a pie, a raw pie on their peel and it's not sliding around, is there anything they could do? Flip it over and flour it again. All right. Yeah. If you could make a pizza with no flour, that would be great. It doesn't do anything for the actual flavor of the pizza. It's just for getting it in and out of the oven. Right. So you want to use as little as possible. But as a beginner, you want to use a little more than normal because you, uh, you know, you want it to go in the oven. Right. So look, you don't want it to here's sit. our test. It's moving, lovely, lovely. So you want to top it. Yeah, obviously cream sauce you want on the bottom. And then your cheeses, you know, you want to kind of evenly, and you want to get like this area here around the crust. Otherwise, it won't have anything to weigh it down and it'll just poof up. Even more uh, important than, interesting. on a white pizza, this is very important. With sauce, you have the sauce in that area and it's holding that area down. The only thing holding that area down here is the toppings. So the right. toppings, you always want to start from the outside and move in. Um, so that looks nice. I think that's a kind of a judicious use of, of cheeses because they're going to melt and spread out even more so in a lower temperature. Right. Right. So this oven is going to be as hot as a as a home cook's oven can get. It's 550 basically. Right. But and it's lower than what we just work with. Yeah. And, and heat, the way it moves is, you know, 100 degrees more is not like, you know, 10% more. It's a lot more. Every mm -hmm. step up you go. The difference between 500 to 600 is a big difference. The difference right. between 600 and 700 is a big difference. It almost like compounds on itself. So that looks great, bro. Yeah, and then <laughs> parm over the whole dang thing. That's gonna be nice. And it's also kind of gonna glue everything together. So this looks good. Again, we're gonna test it. Okay, it's moving. Mm -hmm. And then you don't wanna push it into the oven. You wanna pull the peel out from under it. All right. As soon as it hits the surface, it's gonna stick. Right. So you don't wanna come off and it hits and then you move forward again. All right, my dude, you made that pizza. <laughs> sort of. Very good. A little bit lighter in color compared to the 750. But yes. You know, for a home cook, I think this is fantastic. Yeah, I mean, the cheese melts a little more. Um, you know, you're not gonna get like the, the leopard spotting, if you will, but there's a nice color on the bottom. Yeah. It's, you know, it's gonna be crispy. Right. Heat is a big reason for how, what, what makes a style of pizza what it is. Like New York style pizza is the way it is 
because of the gas ovens that they use. Right. Neapolitan style pizza is, you know, because of the the high temperature, you know, ovens that they use. So your dough, this dough is adaptable to either one. I think it's gonna be very good. All right, let's eat some more pizza, I guess. Oh man. Delicious. That's really good. The only real difference I think is in the crust. Mm -hmm. This is a little bit crispier, harder to fold. Like it doesn't have that yeah. um, delicacy to it necessarily, but right. still fantastic. But I mean, usually people don't get mad about crispy pizza. No. <laughs> this is the crumb. Yeah. And this is like, if I post a picture of a pizza, you know, the pizza nerds are gonna be like, let me see that crumb. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that is a very nice crumb, you know? For all you nerds out there. <laughs> Anthony, thanks so much for coming by. This is a lot of fun. I think this information is gonna be really helpful for people at home who want to make a tastier pizza. Thanks for having me. Yeah, this is a lot of fun. Yeah, right on. I mean, I think it shows that you can make great pizza with pretty much any kind of setup at home. Yeah. Yeah. So get creative out there. Now that you have your dough, I wanna hear what sauce are you using, what topics are you using. And if you enjoy this video, click like, click subscribe. We'll see you next time.